It's Mr. Sanders. It's Mr. Sanders, yeah, yeah. How to make money as an artist. If you're starting from zero, so am I. Let's figure this out. And we're gonna get our mindset right today. All right. Everything that we know about music and business, if it hasn't been working previous, we gotta throw all of our preconceived notions out the window. I thought I knew how music was supposed to be made. I thought I knew how artists were supposed to behave, but I'm realizing I gotta just reset from zero, get a whole different perspective on this thing and build a foundation. So I was watching KSI versus Tommy Fury. <laughs> If you're watching this way in the future you probably don't even care about this fight but anyways it's a youtuber versus a real boxer and they're doing their promo they're yelling and screaming at each other and cursing each other out and a lot of people in the comments are like can we end this influencer boxing era like this is getting old this is over promotion and like everybody has their idea of the way the fight industry should be orchestrated but in my head i'm thinking this ksi dude is probably selling his fight way better than the fighters but the fighters are probably thinking oh we got to keep this pure this legitimate of how we just focus on our skill set but then you see somebody who just comes in and talks a bunch of mess and sells the same amount of tickets as these guys that have been training their whole life to do the exact same thing i almost feel like fighters and artists are in the same way like we want to make music this way we want to act this way and say this is the true pure form of art but then it's not working for us so that that's what I mean by I'm gonna start changing my perspective in a sense that, hey, there's more to this than just your skill. Point blank, there's a lot more to this than just skill. Like you can be good and not ever be heard of and nobody cares and you can be bad and then you can be number one. So we're gonna take that, encapsulate that into our artistry when we're thinking about ourselves as artists. We're not just gonna go with one side of it anymore and think that's okay. Kind of what I talked about in my last video, a lot of our problems are our limiting beliefs. We wanna do what we wanna do, we wanna do what we feel comfortable with, and we don't wanna step outside of our comfort zone because we worry. I worry in many ways. I try to sell beats, I don't really promote. I have a feeling my beats aren't good enough yet. I feel like my music's not good enough yet. I feel like my content on YouTube is not good enough yet. That could be true, that could be false. But what we're gonna do from now on is we're gonna just constantly test our lim limiting belief to the maximum degree like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be the judge as if, if my stuff is good or bad but i am gonna get my stuff in front of more people well at least try and i'm gonna try to do it the correct way if that means packaging things different if that means flooding people's timelines different direct messaging people whatever that means i'm gonna have to take a different approach and to be able to do that more effectively we're gonna have to remove our ego our sense of worth our emotions from this whole equation I want to say on this question. I want everybody here who has ever struggled with insecurity, being able to not feel comfortable with themselves, looking at themselves on camera, your parents didn't affirm you, your brother didn't affirm you, your, your last recent relationship, your ex didn't affirm you, and now you have low self-esteem issues and different things that are going on and you're not able to, to, to feel good about what it means for you to create content. I want every single one of you guys to please be a business owner and not be a personally, uh, personally attached to the content that you're creating. Because once you remove the emotion from content creation and for what content performance looks like, you will start to see the shift in your business and you will start to see the shift in your content because you will start to understand this is not a bad performing video because my self-worth is, is something on wrong with me. People don't like me. People don't like how I look. Oh, I'm unattractive. Oh, people don't like my brand. Oh, my logo sucks. Oh, my logo is not as good as World and Vision. Oh, my graphics aren't as good as World and Vision. Oh, my graphics aren't as good as all these other brands are. No, people aren't attacking you. They want to be able to consume the business. So many of us, what ends up happening is that we allow our self-esteem to be the reason why we don't create content, and now our businesses never grow because we are so emotionally attached to the outcome of what's taking place instead of removing our emotion and being a business owner and being a provider and somebody that's going to go home from this event, look your people in the eye and say, I got a plan, it's okay, we good. 
We're not going to get on the internet anymore to try and band-aid our feelings of unworthiness to the point where we're looking at the results of every piece of content we put out as if like, oh, do people like me? No, we're just going to look at this from now on strictly, I'm going to say strictly business, cause and effect. We put out certain inputs, get out certain outputs. And if it doesn't work that way, we're going to switch it around. We're not going to keep getting sad over our results and thinking that it's something wrong with us. We're detaching ourselves from the results. And if we mess up, that is perfectly fine. We'll just uh, make adjustments. More like a military strategy. It's not, yeah, we're artists, but let's think of ourselves as uh, military generals. We can't get emotional about this. We got to send our cavalry in. We got to send our archers in. And if things don't go well, maybe we got to send our cavalry this way and our archers that way and figure it out. And we win or we lose. We go back to the drawing board because we got people to feed. We got stuff to do. With that said, I know it's not, e it's not always easy to just completely always take your emotion out of it but you see where i'm getting at it's a perspective shift next one a clear decisive plan i think this is what i've been missing most of my time trying to be an artist clear and decisive plan i think you should look at what the end product is and then reverse engineer that and i, I know a lot of people are like oh imagine your house imagine your car that's cute and all like oh i'm gonna be driving this nice car look how cute i am in my car but i think we should be imagining what the business structure will look like in the end what kind of products are are we selling what are our customers saying about the products what are they thanking you for specifically why do they like your products why do they see value in your product what is your what does your day-to-day -day routine look like and also what does the business operation look like in general because then we can just reverse engineer that and work up to it me the main things i do right now make beats youtube videos i like skits and then the music the main product i want to sell is the beats i want to i want to set up a certain program for beat making that I feel like was missing when I was learning how to make beats. I don't want to get too into that right now because I don't want somebody to jack my idea. But anyways, I know I kind of, now that I have an end product of mine of what I want it to look like, I know what my customer avatar should be and it's fellow artists and it's also any other type of creative. And I know what my end product should be that I'm selling. And it should be things that to help the artist, even as I'm saying this out loud, it's not as clear as I would like it to be. So whatever your situation situation is you would probably want to break it down write it down make it as clear as possible that way you can reverse engineer and know the end that you're working to and the end that you're working to is just not some random porsche on your vision board the end that you're working to is an operation that you know that you can envision working a certain way and also at the end of the day none of this is that serious none of it's serious if you fail so what if you succeed so what just think of this as another little game to play another little experiment to run another little activity to do that's not that big of a deal i i feel like we've all put our self-worth in this artistry stuff so much that to the point that like it's devastating people when things don't go a certain way it's, i understand when you have like people to, if you're feeding people off of this it's a little bit of different pressure uh but anyways don't feel the need to get it perfect also i think a lot of times i have a lot of things in the notes that i never filmed i have a lot of things yeah i have a lot of things in just notes that i never filled or that i never filmed because i was so worried about it being right that i didn't do it at all and even as like i'm filming this video i have my notes and everything and i'm just like oh worried if i get it all in i can always make another video adding the stuff that i missed um just do it just do it. That's the video.